say like I have faith, but then yeah. you if you actually believe that, then your belief would propel things to get me. I do you know I've never tipped what? a bar in a <laughs> Why is there a need for a sacrifice in the first place? Ooh, that's a good question. Oh, oh, Introduces an arrow rat. Award winning, you can introduce me by saying, I'm hurt. I'm a, a very tired What's wrong arrow. With that? Oh, right, it hurt. Um, I don't even know how to start this, to be honest. Sup, guys. <laughs> hey, guys, welcome back to my second channel. <laughs> Today, we're going to be making mukbang. Making pancakes. Oh, pancakes, pancakes. Hey, guys, welcome back to my second channel. Well, technically, it's a channel which is my second channel. It's not on YouTube. Get me. Anyway. Right. Hi. Today, I'm in Oxford. I've been in Oxford living here for a week, and I'm now moving to Oxford. And I'm sad to say to all the Glasgow Uni people that I will be dropping out. I wish. My jokes. Anyway. You're not putting that in the video. Today. Because uh, I would have turned 12. Yeah. yeah. Turning You're so old. I just turned 20. Okay. Anyway. I say just. It's been three months. <laughs> okay. So yes, today we're going to be showing you how to make pancakes. And not that most of you will need showing how to make pancakes. Although to I honest, certainly she's do. It's so easy to make. That's, but she yeah. can't cook anything. So that I'm is gonna be slander. I can cook one thing. Right really tomorrow. well. Yeah. And that's it. <laughs> Uh, okay, so yeah. Why so today we're gonna. To I, don't, I just enjoy awkward situations. I'm so old. I'm such a freak. In a okay. good way. Okay, so today we're making pancakes and I don't measure anything, so just follow the ingredients but not the measurement exactly. Basically, two things with pancakes. You want to know how thick do you want it, and that will depend on how much milk you add. And you want how sweet will it be? And that will determine how much sugar you add. Oh, this is not thick. Oh well, it's fine. So let's make some pancakes. So first, I like to add self-raising flour because it um, raises the pancakes more and makes them more fluffy. So, Emma. I, do you know I've never tipped flour in a bag? Is that something I should be admitting to on the internet? Oh. So put some flour. I don't have to open oh, okay. it. I'm not that incompetent. Put some. Do you want a bowl? I uh, believe that there is. Oh flour. look at! Oh my gosh, you got a cooking channel. Oh put the amount of flour that of the amount of pancakes. So how many? One of us are eating pancakes, maybe. No, I don't get fifty. Be afraid because you can always add more. You can't really take it away. Once don't be scared. Goes. Seize the day. Carpe exactly. Day. Exactly. Carpe day. Now, I like to add the dry ingredients first, right? So next, we're adding sugar. Eating it to help. I pretty much like to have my pancakes where I don't really have to add that much sugar. Okay, cool. <laughs> so I would say that's about what, three tablespoons, maybe. Like, it's not that deep. <laughs> Mix it. <laughs> Mixing it. Wait, let's whisk it. Oh, yeah, the whisk is in here. It's not in there. Oh. Uh... You just mix it for like five seconds because you're just literally mixing dry ingredients. And then we're gonna add one egg. Kind of, yeah. Yes. I'm actually surprisingly bad at Egg cracking is a part of my culinary skill set. <laughs> no. <laughs> that was all right. Nice. That was good. So you should add whisk it because we'll get like loads of nice air bubbles. But you just wanna, you know. Mix it about a bit. <laughs> now I'm adding milk. This will determine. We're still mixing. 
This will determine how thick it is. And you just keep adding milk. Okay. Oh no! That's big. <laughs> Decline that cool. Jeez. Just make it as runny as you want, basically. So now you have a nice well, mixture. Awesome. So what I also like to do sometimes is melt some butter. Make it smooth and buttery and beautiful, you know? So we're gonna bang out these pancakes. Beautiful. Oh, you put it in the pancakes, that's interesting. Yeah. Make them in oil or butter. Just use, I use, use coconut oil. That's really good, because that's like quite a nice oil to use. And it's harder to go make them brown with coconut oil. Cook it a bit longer. So what you want your oil to be nice and hot, not just in the pan, you know, like, so you want it to be hot so that it's not just soaking up all the oil, but it's actually deep fried on the oil. I Get. see, I see. Don't soak up mine. Oh, oh, sorry, it's all yours. Are you burnt? No, it wasn't that hot. <laughs> sorry, Yara. That's okay. Are you okay? It's okay. It that would have been really bad if it was hot. Yeah. Yeah, that was dumb. Well, we're all learning lessons this week. which were sent in. I wouldn't say either of us are particular experts on anything, but I mean, if you're a part of a faith, then you are part of a faith. Just chatting whilst eating. <laughs> That's a very good point. Okay, what should we start with? Um, did you put these in the video? Yes, so it says, this one might be cliche, but how is the role of D Jesus different in your respective faiths? So I think that's a pretty good starter. That that se that separates the yeah. leading of it's, the two different. Yeah. Oh, this, <laughs> sort of like. <laughs> yes. So what are some differences between Jesus? Well, I mean, Jesus is God in Christianity. Yeah. Well, that that's probably the biggest thing. I would say. Jesus is God in Christianity, and also is part of the the construct of the Holy Trinity. As a, yeah. Whereas in Islam. The role of Jesus, much like Muhammad, much like and Muhammad, who's kind of the prophet whose teachings we follow, mm. um, much like Moses, much like Abraham, um, is a messenger of God, um, and is Pro like that's prophet. Also. Yeah, kind of ordained to deliver a message mm. on behalf of God mm. on earth. So crucial. The crucial difference is is that mm. Jesus is a man in Islam, and a God in all the prophets and men. That's, yeah. there's a, a lot of them. Jesus is also, yeah, Jesus is a man, but I guess, yes, in a way, a messenger of God mm. and God. Yeah, but so. we don't pray to, we don't pray to Jesus. No. Or, I, but in the same way that we wouldn't pray to Muhammad, is a, it's not, is it, it's not because it's Jesus, yeah. but it's because we believe that these figures have a different function. Mm in the faith, in delivering the message of God than they do in Christianity. Mm. The, would you say that the most key person of the faith is Muhammad, or would you say it's like God, but Muhammad is God. Emphasized. So yeah, you'd just it's, it's, Yeah, and Muhammad delivers God's okay. message. So he's just as, one of the many. Yeah, one yeah. <laughs> there are many thousands of prophets in, in Islam, of which 25 are mentioned in the Quran specifically, with kind of either a loose outline or a detailed outlining of their lives. For example, the life of Moses is very detailed. The life of Jesus in um, the Quran is um, also very detailed. 
Who do you follow? See, it's, it's not really about like who do you follow because obviously the, the main person is always God because it's yeah. always about like worshipping God and how, yeah, like who God is. Be- because God is Jesus, that's one of, yeah. do you know what I mean? Like, so for Christianity, the main, the, the whole pillar of your faith is like whether you believe Jesus has died and rose yeah. again and then whether you put your faith in him. Mm. The major differences between Christianity and Islam. Um, and so yeah the different ways of salvation so, yeah exactly yeah. like your passport is there are, basically, there are five pillars of Islam there is the Shahada which is the, the declaration of I believe in I believe that there is only one God and Muhammad is his prophet um, which is kind of the most important one the second one being the prayer that's kind of that's belief mm-hmm. second one is prayer that's your spiritual maintaining a spiritual connection with God the third one is fasting uh, Ramadan um, that's there's a month in the year in which all Muslims fast, dawn till dusk, uh, no food or water. Um, at which uh, at, at the end of which month um, comes the celebration of Eid. Um, the fourth pillar being zakat, which means uh, charity, um, kind of like loosely quite yeah how the tax system works here. But um, oh, so is it like a ten percent kind of thing? Or is it yeah, it's like a cut of everyone's, yeah, that, but like of your testament. savings, not your. I guess so it's not I could be wrong about this. You've earned. Yeah. It's so basically it's, it's just like there's a certain amount you should give. If if yeah, if you have the money, you pay zakat, and it's oh, from my understanding at least, or oh, because I'm not earning anything, I haven't had to look at, into this. Um, zakat is paid from what you save, as opposed to a cut of what you earn. Oh, okay, so, so kind of your it, cho- kind of choice. There is or, a loose yeah. I I'm, I'm I'm really not sure. Yeah, about like this, we actually. don't. Yeah, have we're going to have to cut this out. kind of the the final one. Um, not to say that it's the least important, but there's less emphasis placed on this because it's a. Uh, obviously, there are Muslims all over the world. It costs quite a bit of money now to travel oh. from that distance and go to Hajj um, oh. and uh, kind of perform the pilgrimage. So you, would you say there's kind of like a ranking to it then? So yeah. like you say like the fifth one's the least, yeah, and then the first one's the greatest, yeah, so like most important one to do. Yeah. So what is is it like you have to try to do the five or is it like what's the what's you, the kind of you do the five. Aim. You oh, try, okay. or you try to do the five. Especially right. the first two. The shahada, obviously, shahada is belief. So you're not Muslim until you have the belief. Okay. Exactly. Muhammad being the, um, Muhammad being God's prophet, the yeah. kind of the last prophet. Oh, okay. um, it's uh, the first two. Um, it's not it. So it's not enough just to believe. Okay. There's there's more there's more to it. Whereas in Christianity, I would say. Mm. Yeah, that's a major difference, and it's not that you shouldn't. Like once you're a Christian, that you're not expected to to do what like God says. Like I, I think the I would say like the description of the belief is like your your main foundation is your faith, and like yeah. without believing in Jesus, like Jesus is the yeah, way. Similarly, knowing Jesus is eternal life. That's what it's in the Bible. So anything that's good, like which would be like in the commandments or something like that, you would say works or something yeah. like that. So, yeah, usually people can be a bit confused. Like, is it like your belief in Jesus plus a few of the works, or is it like some certain works you have to do and then like, but it's like completely your faith in Jesus which saves you. So that's like once you know Jesus like died rose again, um, and you believe that like that was for your sins, and you, uh, yeah, you like repent and you say like I've sinned, and I believe that Jesus is like covered yeah. sin as like him being the sacrifice. I think a lot of Christians can be confused between this is like is it just your faith that saves you and what I would say is like your faith is the thing that completely saves you like you know you're secure like once you've believed but then a result of the result of knowing God is to do like to want to please him want to naturally like want to do what he says so you say someone doesn't have faith until they also do what God want them to do because I was going to say there are there are loads of people I would say they have faith but like so there's a lot of like imagery in the bible about like a a good tree would bear good fruit Mm. and a bad tree will bear bad fruit like you you can't have the vice versa so it's kind of like but that's the thing I'd I'd say a lot of Christians could maybe be caught up in thinking like do does that person are they like a real Christian whereas at the end of the day it is God who's going to know do you know what I mean? And yeah. you can see, but it says you're like you'll know them by the fruit of like their fruit. So yeah. you can see evidently if someone's putting their faith into action or not. Yeah. But that's not necessary to say you know whether they're saved or not. Like, 
It's saying like once you're saved, sanctification, which would be all the kind of good things you do afterwards. So the Holy Spirit, which I feel like this is so confusing. Basically, God's working in you to make you more like him, like Jesus. And Jesus was a good, like perfect example of what it looks like to perfectly follow God. And then because he was perfect, that's why he was the perfect sacrifice, which means there doesn't need to be any more sacrifices, basically. That's basically Why was there a need for a sacrifice in the first place? Ooh, that's a good question. And I feel like, would we have the same answer? I don't know. Well, um, everyone is born with sin. Um, mm. Everyone sins. There's no, there's no one good but God. Yeah. So everyone needs to be saved. Um, it's not about like the ranking of how many bad things you've done or like if you've literally like if you're like mother Teresa and then like you mm. swore once like then you're screwed like it's just basically like no one no one meets the standard of god mother whatsoever. Teresa stops her toes yeah. <laughs> but yeah there's like a verse which says like our good works are like filthy rags to god because he's so like set apart like holy means like set apart right and so he's so completely different to him like we can't think like in christianity it's like your your works are not gonna measure up to God's perfect standard kind of yeah, thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's yeah. interesting that you guys have this aspiration to be godlike. Am I right mm -hmm. in saying that? I mean Because if your aspiration is to be like God Jesus is good. So you want to be like God in that respect, but not in terms of you want to be a God like Yeah, no no creator. that's <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. that's you want to be more like Jesus because Jesus is perfect. And you want to please God because that's just like an overflow of no like naturally you'd be like if you literally believe someone died like was a sacrifice for you to inherit internal life like you kind of like i owe him everything kind of naturally it's not like you must do this 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 but like it's just natural to respond with like obedience and like jesus says like if you love me keep my commandments you literally say like i have faith but then yeah. you if you actually believe that then your belief would Propel things to get me. If you love me, keep my commandments. Oh, um, part one. The need for sacrifices. Everyone sinned. The way in the Old Testament, like when blood was shed of like animals, that was a covering. Like the priests would do that for covering that person's sins. So mm. there would be loads of loads of shedding of blood, like day and night. There would just be like constant like blood flow because like. Obviously, everyone's got to cover their sins and that. Like, like, you know that famous verse, like, God so loved the world that he sent his only son. Um, he sent Jesus to die so that whoever believes in him will not perish but have eternal life. What is that sacrifice? Like, Jesus, when he came as a man, died, and that covered everyone's sins because he was a perfect, like, blemishless sacrifice as opposed to, like, a lamb, which can't really cover your sin. Can't compete with Jesus. Basically, yeah. But yeah, what's the reason mm. for sacrifice? Is it kind of different? But if the sacrifice doesn't have that same function, oh, well, okay. because obviously Jesus isn't sent to, well, in Islam, mm. Jesus isn't sent as a sacrifice. It's like the same kind of covering sin. Imagine it'd be because like the Old Testament's pretty similar. You know? This is actually pretty interesting. I'm going to read up on this after. Sacrifices about it. have a pretty ma like big role. Like, because people usually think when it comes to Christianity, they're like, yeah, that's like the Old Testament is kind of out the door. Yeah. Whereas it's so important because the whole book of the Bible represents God. Like he's the same God. In yeah. The new and old. It's not like suddenly changes. When I read the Old Testament, I see like the threads of kind of the forebodings, but I guess it's like prophecies yeah. um, of Jesus being. There's lots of, and then like there's a book called Hebrews where it kind of compares loads of figures like Moses or a or Adam or Abraham and like Jesus being that perfect kind of completion of that um but you have the story of Isaac and Abraham because this is why yeah. I think it's safe sa it stem stems from the same yeah. root it's it, the story in fact I think the story is exactly the same in yeah. both religions Abraham goes to sacrifice his son because God tells him to God tells him to and then right at the last moment yeah. it says as kind of I, I know that you do anything for me and like I, I yeah. as a test of your faith I know and you then, have complete yeah. faith and trust in my purpose yeah here's the lamb and that's where that's so where yeah, that's God why we have that eat yeah oh this is okay. our, that second yeah. eat is because of the last story of, i guess obviously easter is not about that but i mean it's like jesus but i mean so christians would interpret that as 
God provides the lamb, like yeah. then, and he's about to sacrifice his son. Hence, Jesus on your day. Being the son. Oh, I see. Yeah, yeah, yeah so that he's makes the lamb sense. of God. Yeah. So God provides the lamb there, but then ages, like, basically, God, obviously, God knows everything. Yeah. So he knew, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. from the first sin that he was going to send Jesus yeah. to get me. So it's kind of like you'd read a lot of the Old Testament in light of looking at Jesus. But Before, the, it's the same God. Mm. But Jesus. Is Jesus exists in the Old Testament? Is he like? Yeah. Is he part of God still in the Old Testament? Yeah, and it's, the kind of representation of him would be like God as in a man form, kind of, because we're made in the image of God. That's I'm not sure if that's the same. God made um, male and female in His image. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so like in His likeness, not exactly the same. But yeah. As in, <clears throat> we are some cre- attributes. You know, if you're a creator, your creation represents part of you yeah or part of what you get it's not like a full representation obviously yeah you know so um jesus being a man form, yeah. like i would imagine that's like part of god's image obviously yeah because but being made in god's image well i was well, a man yeah and also like there's parts like for example uh, it's kind of a long story but there, there are like things that's like there was a man in the fire jesus is the perfect version of like all these people failed basically like even though these people are all prophets of God and yeah. messengers and blah blah blah, they they were all human. Yeah. Only like whereas God, like Jesus, is fully God and fully man. Yeah. Yeah. That's so interesting because we've got that function. It's less failure, but we we're supposed to the function of the story, the messengers of the prophets in the Quran is an educational tool on kind of how to go about your faith, and you learn lessons from each prophet. One prophet, like that, each each test a prophet goes through, mm. the one after it kind of learns from, and mm. that they're, they're, they're yeah, the it's like so is it more like chronological, in like was it is it needed to be chronologically read to be like more understood? Um, not necessarily because the the tests are individual, but you see if you were to place it chronologically, you see that you reach Muhammad and it's almost not in the same, uh, it's not in the same light of perfection as you guys would have mm-hmm. Jesus in. But there, there is a, the, a round, circular, full loop to... Full loop? Yeah, <laughs> to uh, Muhammad's, Muhammad's deliverance of the faith. Oxford Classics yeah. language. Loop. loop. Loop's a great word. Oh, I thought you said no. full loop. Oh, full loop. Full, oh, full right, loop. I was like, what's a full loop? <laughs> like, real. Not, a, yeah. That's interesting, you know. It's not that you don't learn from the prophet. Like you yeah, learn, yeah, yeah, you learn from like loads of people. Because um, the reason why I ask if it's the same God is because Jesus is in God, or God is Jesus. Mm-hmm. If he is in the New Testament, he has to be in the Old Testament. But then in the yeah, Old Testament, yeah. Jesus is a man. Kind of, you see him as a. As in, in yeah, in like the New Testament, you see him in uh, flesh in, mm, as okay. a man. But like you know how God's like eternal and exists like yeah. kind of outside of time. So that's why I mean like I I wonder often because we would think like as humans, oh God planned for this to happen at this. Obviously, it's out of time like in human times. But I mean for him, like how long was that in God? Years. Yeah. You know I mean? yeah, like, yeah. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? I was yeah. thinking. I would have to wonder about that. You know. But but again. So I'm, I don't know why I'm so fixated on this point. No, no, but also because okay. my reading of the Old Testament compared to the New Testament is that, yeah, um, well, I really enjoy the Old Testament first and foremost. I think it's just oh, a, it? especially the King James version. I think it's just a, it's just a cracking, and especially the way it's written. But I mean, th- this isn't even me. But there's this common conception that the Old Testament God is slightly wrathful. Yeah, um, that is a big. And the New Testament God, well, it's not. He's he's not the wrathful God that he mm. is in the Old Testament one. So where is there a change, and how do you reconcile the two? A lot of Christians would even say that, like, oh, God's more like angry and yeah. showing his wrath in the Old Testament, whereas in the New Testament he's really nice. But I would say, well, I've heard a lot of like kind of quotes and talks about it, and it's more like if someone was on a desert island and yeah. read the whole bible like not realizing they're two different things like yeah. they'd see just this exact same i think because you kind of read it with a with a lens of like yeah. jesus everything is all bubbly and nice yeah but, like kind of i i also there's so many different things about why god punishes people yeah and that's a whole different thing but yeah with the israelites basically they were his chosen people yeah and so those kind of things, the consequences that happen when they turn away from God, all that stuff, 
it's the same pattern with us now mm. i would say yeah so yeah. but um it's, it's not, not as... like it's not like he's not going to be sending locusts like mm. you, you yeah and it's a, i don't know like i wouldn't i wouldn't know the full thing but i would say god's exact like if you think of if you read like stuff like revelation which is like the what happens like when like when jesus basically comes when jesus right like, returns is when like this is the end of the world kind of thing like heaven hell thing um like everyone who's not covered by so that's why sacrifices are so important everyone who's not covered by that sacrifice would still get inflicted by the wrath of god again which would be hell yeah yeah i was also wondering again i'm sticking to the same point i don't know <laughs> cut it it's out it's fine but um the function of the book as it were in throughout time the uh, not necessarily mm. like, be it the torah like the old testament versus the new testament mm. the the function of the old testament and the language in which it, which it's written is very um i feel like it serves its time um it, it's very manichaean it's very black and white um which is why you get ang- you get the po- there are lots of polarities i feel you get angry glad mm. um and it's just it's an earlier stage of human history. But um, so, that's another thing I think. In the Old Testament, God is so merciful. But I think people don't pick that up as much because it's not like everything is covered. But like there's so many, so like, yeah. in all the prophet things, it's basically like, do this or I'm going to destroy you. Um, but turn back and I'm going to have mercy on you. Yeah. Kind of thing. And like all that mercy, which is lavished on people, is like everything we do is under god's grace kind of thing yeah. because the fact that you're still breathing and like you con- constantly like we sin against god yeah but he still chooses like to give him like so i would say he's o- like s- s- overly merciful throughout the whole the whole thing and then jesus would be like so there's a verse where it says like god demonstrates his love so that would just be like a m- one demonstration of his love but i wouldn't say he hasn't been loving in the old testament because there's so yeah. many times there's a lot of in the prophecies he i feel like i don't know if it's the same obviously um but like a lot of the time he says like if he's like israel's kind of being like a whore <laughs> yeah. like if i'm i'm your husband like which is why marriage has such big significance as well like yeah um he's like you're my wife i'm your husband you've been a whore basically when you're not loyal to me but i'm still gonna take you back i'm still like he there's loads of things in the prophecies which are like about that it's hard to look at god if you only see him in individual parts like it's important to like read the whole bible and then like god is the same he never changes yeah i think but yeah i also wonder well obviously translation you guys read more in translation than we do Mm -hmm. in fact yeah there's kind of there's there's no debate about that yeah yeah um, and I, I often wonder how much a part that has to play in the kind of obviously in the understanding of the faith and the, and the, the because when you translate it's um, obviously because it's translating it's impossible to translate exactly there are some sacrifices you have to make in translation whether it be yeah. the tone um, the the how literal it is mm. um, and I just I just wonder yeah, how much of if if you'd what what he's actually like if you were to read it in the actual language, how would he then come across? As in what? Oh, would as God, in if oh, would, would God across? be interpreted differently had we read it in different and like kind of translations or as in in the original language? In the original language, yeah. Got yeah. You? Mm, well, I think so. I think you've heard of me talk a lot about how Christianity is as much spiritual as. The physical yeah and i would say even possibly more so because like the spiritual has been for like god has existed forever whereas the physical has been made for time yeah get me so um so that would i think like not that it's unimportant about translation i think it's like super important about accuracy and like um having the right ideas about god and who he is mm. but i would say like for me uh, it would be the overarching themes that you can see in the Bible, which would portray how God is. Like, I don't think it would be pretty hard to get, like, you wouldn't just have one passage which said, God is like this, and when he's unhappy or something like that, like, you'd see see all these themes overarching, and that would, you know, someone's character. Yeah. It's not like, 
one thing about their life tells you how they are. You know, yeah. you, you look at someone's life and then you're like, yeah. there's, this is how they are overall. So yeah, I wouldn't, in terms of what God's like, I wouldn't be worried about that for specific translations because you can see what the kind of things he does. Yeah, it's fair enough. And it's like kind of in his character or what out of his character. But for example, with things where it's like, you could maybe argue about it in different it's like you should do this if you're a christian and then someone's like no you don't need to do that you can see by overarching like thing like you can see god's character and he has overarching themes of like loving god first with all your heart mind soul strength and then loving other people and that's all the commandments fulfilled by loving if you love god and your neighbor you can't sin basically so kind of like Seems so simple, but obviously it's much more difficult than that. Yeah. than that. But like, yeah, I think, so yeah, I wouldn't say specific translations would be so radically different, different than that. Mm-hmm. And, but yeah, I would also say like, definitely read as many different translations as you can. Like I wouldn't yeah. just say read one because it's your favorite. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, because obviously there are biases, like yeah. people who are translating have their own interpretation. Um, and it's just like very that. much informed by the kind of the mood yeah. of the time as well. Yeah, Especially and it's like loads of poetry, like it's so many different genres yeah. and stuff as well. So. But I would actually ask, how if you don't read Arabic, speak Arabic, how how do people like, it, or in this country for example, how do people usually go about reading the Quran? Because yeah, um, there's a huge emphasis on learning Arabic from an early age, with. Um, within Islam, uh, whether you are Arabic or not. Um, so I can, yeah, I can read, write, understand very little, in fact, I'm, I'm not a good example. But um, it, the translation is often done side by side with the, oh, so you read with the, the actual, Quran. exactly, yeah. Oh, cool. Which is, there are, that's how you normally, if you were to see a translated Quran, it's, Unless it's kind of done oh. one by by like that's pretty cool, you know. Oxford World Classics, they'll do like just the translation. Whereas yeah. actual, if you were to get it from an actual mosque, yeah, um, or the the ones that kind of mosques and Islamic organisations put yeah. out, they they put out ones with, um, the Arabic and the English side oh, by side. Oh, that's that's actually really cool. Like yeah. obviously you can do that. Like for the Bible, like you can get the online with the English, like each word or whatever. But yeah. Obviously, if that was in a book, that would be better. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, like oh, that's cool. I think that that would be good to encourage people to learn Greek and Hebrew. Yeah, or Aramaic, or and also because we pray in Arabic as well. Oh, is it? So you understand what you say. But for example, obviously, as someone who's not an Arab, mm. my understanding of it is—it's not to say that it's superficial, but I couldn't tell you exactly. I can tell you what a sentence means, um, or what a yeah, an an ayah means um or what this uh, an ayah is like one sentence within a surah which is like a a passage okay. uh, um or a verse rather right um um but i couldn't kind of pick out the individual words yeah. for you off so the bat and tell you less, which one it is there's less in the would you say like it's more important to like read it in the english and understand it or w- would it be more important to kind of is there like a spiritual aspect to that of like not necessarily needing the translation um as is always the case with these things i would say is there's a careful tightrope in between the yeah. yeah that's the kind of balance that needs to be struck the english is understanding is very important yeah. understanding in a language that you think and feel in because yeah it's it, for example for me english is a, wasn't the first language i learned but it's definitely the language of my existence. Yeah, yeah. I, was, I, I, I very much see the world um, through English as well as other languages, but it's kind of the, the, the primary, the, yeah, is it, yeah, is it the language in which I see the world. Um, and if you don't have that with the Arabic, then it's just, I would say it's harder to have that connection that spiritual connection with the Arabic alone if you don't have the translation. Obviously, it's entirely possible to teach yourself the Arabic. And, like, yeah, yeah. in the same way, I never thought I'd learn um, ancient Greek and Latin. Yeah, but, you know, yeah. we did an intensive course in two terms. Yeah. And that's 
that's me done with ancient Greek. Yeah, no, it's definitely not like that. I'm, I'm awful. But, um, but for people, for example, like if you were like in a village or whatever, and you couldn't. Yeah. Learn so it. it's kind of within your means. Yeah. You know what I mean? Whereas obviously we live in we live in the west, the Western world. Yes. Yeah, so and it's, it's much more accessible. You have everything at your fingertips mm. uh, to an outrageous extent and it's just about yeah it's your own will I mean obviously I don't want to pass judgment on anyone's faith and I'm I've, obviously I'm certainly not a perfect emblem by any means or stretch of the imagination um I wouldn't even call I would be comfortable calling myself a representative yeah no, it's definitely not like that I'm, I'm awful but, um, but for people for example like if you were like in a village or whatever and you couldn't yeah it. so it's kind of within your means yeah you know what I mean whereas obviously we live in we live in the west, the western world. Yes, yeah, so and it's, it's much more accessible. You have everything at your fingertips mm. uh, to an outrageous uh, extent, and it's just about yeah, it's your own will. I mean, obviously, I don't want to pass judgment on anyone's faith. And I'm, I'm obviously I'm certainly not a perfect emblem by any means or stretch of the imagination. Um, I wouldn't even call. I would be comfortable calling myself a representative per se but I'm, I, oh. I am I would have to I, I have to be a representative but I, I wouldn't elect myself willingly <laughs> as a representative of the faith yeah well I mean I think for anyone to say they are the, like, the epitome of like a certain not thing, necessarily epitome being but, difficult. but an ambassador yeah okay that's true like you some people could clearly be which is which is interesting for women especially because we're so visibly visibly yeah. women yeah which I get visibly visibly women visibly <laughs> Muslim <laughs> Yeah, visibly. Well, those who choose to wear a headscarf, um, like myself. Please hit like and subscribe to see more. What are you gonna do with the kids, oh, bro? Women, I love. I love church. Yeah. <laughs> we love. were in a choir together. Taking the church, now taking the mosque. Yeah. It's No. no, no, I'm saying I was 11 when I went to school, so yes, I was still 11. No, so, anyway, yeah, quick maths. Well, nearly 10 years, because I'm 21. Did you ever tell me where I was from? No, this, literally, next month is our 10 years. Oh, oh no, it's 2021. Oh, yeah. I've never watched myself be. I don't really do that either. <laughs> <laughs>